20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, come eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, And my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. The 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. 
The first reading comes from Proverbs 9, 1 to 6. We hear about wisdom building a house. In the early Old Testament period, wisdom was simply a way of finding the good life, and it involved Proverbs, which taught people what the best way to live was. It's something that we might hear from the mouth of a person like Benjamin Franklin. A stitch in time saves nine, early to bed, early to rise, makes a person healthy, wealthy, and wise, things like that. But later on in Old Testament history, the people of Israel began to think of God as living at the other end of the universe, totally transcendent. And they had to find a way to communicate with God, to come into contact with God. So they began to speak of some of his hypostasis, some of his attributes, as being almost persons that would communicate God's glory, his holiness, and in this case, his wisdom. And when the Old Testament authors spoke about wisdom, they presented wisdom as a woman who is patterned after the Egyptian goddess Ma'at, the goddess of truth, the goddess of judgment. Wisdom is seen as building a house and preparing a meal for the uninitiated. She offers to teach those who are foolish, because without her, we cannot know the ways of God. And the meal that she prepares is bread and wine. This is a very useful image because today we'll speak about Jesus as the bread of life who offers his flesh for the life of the world. The second reading comes from Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. In this reading, the author counsels the people to live a good, holy life. This is a very important teaching in early New Testament times. Paul, Peter, Whoever wrote letters to the early Christian community always advised them to preach the gospel by their conduct so that pagans could see that the Christian message was authentic. Very often we hear a saying, saint on Sunday, sinner on Monday. The idea being that people put up an act on Sunday, they play holy, holy, but then on Monday they go back to life and they do all sorts of things that are inconsistent with the Christian message. This author asked the people to be consistent, and in fact to fill their life with praise of God, singing hymns, canticles. Because if we're thinking about holy things, it's easier to be holy. But if our minds are in the gutter, it's easier to be in the gutter. The Gospel is from John 6, 51-58. Remember, all over these Sundays, we've been hearing the Bread of Life discourse and Jesus presented himself as wisdom incarnate. After that first reading, we can see why, because wisdom prepares a meal of bread and wine. But in verse 51, Jesus says that the bread of life is my flesh for the life of the world. The word flesh in Greek has two meanings. It could mean our fleshiness, that which drags us down. St. Paul talks about the contrast between the spirit and the flesh. Or it could mean the flesh, the bodily form, which Jesus assumed when he became incarnate. In fact, in chapter 1, verse 14 of John, the prologue, we hear that the word became flesh. And the word flesh in that verse is the same word as used here. So the Eucharist is Jesus' presence in the world. Now, we don't fully understand that, but Jesus is saying, I am really there. When you partake of the Eucharist, your flesh and my flesh become one. In human life, the only action intimate enough to use that term is marriage, making love. In a sense, when we receive the Eucharist, we are marrying our God. We are becoming one with him. Well, some of the people are disgusted because it sounds like Jesus is proposing cannibalism. And how does Jesus soften it? He says, not only do you have to eat my flesh, you have to drink my blood. Remember, Jewish butchering all the blood is drained because blood signifies life and it belongs to God alone. And so the idea of drinking an animal's blood was abhorrent to the Jewish people, let alone a person's blood. And Jesus goes on and says, you have to devour my flesh. That if you don't need me, if you don't make me a part of your life, if you don't thirst for me, then you'll have no part with me. That truly we have to live in Christ because this is the only way to the Father. The Father draws us, and if we eat of the bread of life, we will have life. We will be participating in the very life of Christ. 
But if we abstain from it, we're as good as dead, because something inside of us will starve to death. And may God bless us.